welcome to an introductory product demonstration of FinOps for Cloud. You'll see timestamps listed here. Feel free to skip ahead to the sections most relevant to you. Hey Omar, I heard that Software One has just released a new cloud spend management platform. Can you tell me a bit more about it? Yes, it's called FinOps for Cloud, and it's a tool designed to help our clients manage their cloud spend much more effectively. It provides visibility into cloud spending, helps set budgets, and offers recommendation to optimize costs. And on top of that, it allows you to manage multiple cloud providers, such as Azure, AWS, or GCP on a single platform. How cool is that? Sounds really powerful. Can we take a look? Sure, let's jump in. Here's the homepage and it gives you a snapshot of your organization expenses, top resources consumed, any recommendations, policy violations, as well as any pools requiring attention. We'll explain the concepts of pool when we get into it. Before we explore each section, here's a quick look at the sidebar where you will find everything you need to manage your cloud spend more effectively. We'll start off with recommendations, and this is where you will find proactive suggestions to optimize your cloud environment. And on a glance, you can see the possible monthly savings that you can achieve by actioning against the provided recommendations. And additionally, you can also see the savings incurred if you've opted in to any reservations or saving plans. Very cool. So where, where are these recommendations actually coming from? Are they, are they native to each cloud provider? That's a great question. And no. So these are basically generated within the system. So they are not coming from your native cloud providers. Got it. Got it. Okay, great. I mean, I also noticed there's a last check-in time just here um, and also a countdown uh, to the next one. What, what's that all about? So this basically shows you when the system scanned through your resources previously and when the next check will happen. However, you have the ability to refresh this by clicking the force check option here. Nice, um, good to know it's regularly updated as well. And, and how can I tailor these recommendations to suit what I care about the most? So you can actually leverage on various filters. So starting off with the um, data sources, so you can customize your view based on your connected data sources. Similarly, you can look at the recommendations across the different categories or based on the different applicable services. Additionally as well, you can also customize the view of these recommendations by switching the toggle from cards to a tabular layout. And at the same time, you can leverage on the search to look at keywords based on the recommendations. Great, and once I've reviewed these recommendations, like what's, what's then the next step to be able to dive deeper into the actual resources behind my spend? Okay, so this is where we dive into the resources section. And essentially the resources section provides you insights on your resources. And at a glance, you are provided with the total expenses, the total resource counts, as well as the possible monthly savings, which are essentially coming from the previous section. And you also have the ability to break down the resources. Okay, and, and what do these breakdowns mean? Well, the expenses breakdown allows you to visualize your resources in the context of their actual expenses, whereas the resource count allows you to see the specific number of resources for the different services within your cloud provider. And lastly, the tags allows you to visualize your resources in the context of their actual tags. Additionally, as well, you can leverage on the date range to uh, narrow down your resources based on a specific duration. And at the same time, you can leverage on various filters to narrow down your resources. And on top of that, you can categorize the resources based on the different options available or perhaps based on the different time frames. And lastly, you can also group the resources based on pool, owner, or tags. Great. I mean, is it possible to export this information at all? Yes, the export functionality will soon be coming to the product. Nice. Um, and I see perspectives up on the top right hand side there. What, what is this? OK, so basically perspective allows you to save the configuration that you've um, created. So let's say in this example, um, I'm applying a filter on data sources and perhaps looking at active resources. So what I can do here is I can then save this as my perspective. OK, and by doing so, this allows me to come back to this same configuration at any stage later on, instead of coming back again and applying the same filters. And depending on how many perspectives you have created, you will see them all here, and you can then simply apply them back again. Great, I love that I can create these views aligned to like my own requirements. Um, 
And are there other ways that I can organise data to suit internal reporting, like based on cost centres or location, perhaps? Yes, definitely. And for that, let's jump into pools. So pools is basically the area within the platform that allows you to organize your resources based on how you want to report on them. And this could be things like cost center, uh, project, department, or even your organizational structure. And by default, our system creates these uh, pools automatically for data sources when data sources are added to the platform. And, and what if I wanted to create my own structure? So instead of using the default option, Yes, you can definitely customize um, the view based on your own unique structure. All you need to do is first delete all of the existing pools and manually proceed to create the new pools. And you can then leverage on the assignment rules to then configure your resources accordingly. And once you have um, configured the assignment rules, you can then also see the resources that are linked to each pool that you have defined. And lastly, once you have created your pools and configured the assignment rules, you can then apply monthly limits to each respective pool. And in case you're going to exceed the expenses for this month, or perhaps the forecasted spend is going to increase or exceed the limit, then basically those will be captured within the pools requiring attention in the home page. Great. So if I set up pools to mirror my internal cost structures, how do I actually then see the impact of that setup? Can I can I track spend through those pools? Yes, definitely that's possible. So for this, let's jump into the cost explorer. So the cost explorer is where you can visualize your expenses. And based on the date range that you have um, defined, you will see the total expenses incurred versus the historical expenses incurred as well. And at the same time, you can customize this view based on the different time intervals or customizing it based on your specific um, date ranges. So then to answer your question, you can then see your expenses breakdown based on the pools that you have configured in the pools section. So here you will then see the specific expenses for each pool as a percentage against the total expenses for that defined duration. And similarly, you can do the same in case you want to visualize your expenses based on the different data sources, or based on the different owners. So Cost Explorer looks like a great way to visualize this spend. Um, but what if I want to actively manage risk or, or make sure that we don't overspend? Um, is there a way to set controls or alerts? Yes, this is where policies come into play. So policies is where you will find tools that help keep your cloud environment compliant, cost efficient, and well-structured. Okay, and, and what kind of policies are we talking about here? So we have three different types of policies, anomaly detection, quotas and budgets, as well as tagging policies. Let's start off with anomaly detection. And this is where you can create custom policies to flag unexpected events in terms of expenses or resource counts. For example, this one here will trigger an alert if the daily expenses go 30% above the average for the last seven days. If that happens, it's logged as a violation right here within the platform. Makes sense. And I can imagine budget tracking would be a key for a lot of teams. What kind of budget policies can we set up here um, and, and how flexible are they? Okay, So they're pretty flexible. In terms of the budgets, we have three different types of budgets that you can work with. Firstly is the resource quota, which basically sets um, limits on specific resources. Recurring budgets, this is for things like monthly cost caps and expiring budgets. This is great for short term projects or campaign. So basically you can then set thresholds, time frames, and get notified before you overspend. Nice. And, and what about tagging policies? I know a lot of teams struggle with keeping environments organized. That's all about keeping your environment clean and consistent by ensuring that your cloud resources are properly categorized and monitored according to your organization standard. So for example, this one here enforces that the cost center as a tag is required. And as we can see here, there are three violations. And if we would like to see the impacted resources, we can click on show resources below actions. So then once I've got policies in place and I've got data flowing in, I probably want to then bring others into the platform. How does user access work? 
Okay, so user access is handled within user management under system. And this is where the organization manager has the ability to invite users, assign roles, and manage their access accordingly within the platform. Ah, good to know. Okay, and is it possible to then restrict what a user can, can see or do? Yes, that's possible. So as an organization manager, when you add a user, you have the ability to assign roles. And within the platform, we have three different types of roles. Organization manager, which is the highest level of access and control. Secondly is manager, which is assigned at the pool level. So basically you have access to a specific pool and have ability to create sub pools within that pool itself. And lastly, engineer as a role is assigned at the resource level. So this way you can restrict access to users based on the roles. And then once users are onboarded, how do we actually get, get data into the platform? Is, is that then through the data sources section? Yes, precisely. Data sources is where you will connect your different cloud providers. As an organization manager, your first step after placing your order and creating your organization is to then connect your relevant data sources. And as you can see, the platform supports AWS, Azure, or GCP. You can view our FinOps onboarding video on our YouTube channel to find out more about this. Great. And once we're connected and data is flowing, can I track what's happening in the account or see who's doing what? Yes, definitely. So you can do this through the events page, and this is where you will see your entire account activity. You can think of this as your audit log. And additionally, you can apply uh, date filters to look at the different events happening for a specific period. That's really useful for governance. And if I ever need to manage the account, where, where do I go? Okay, so for this, you can navigate to settings. And here you will see your organization ID. This is basically your unique identifier. And it's very important that you provide us with this ID if you reach out to us for any support. Invitations is where you will see any pending invitations sent to you so you can accept them to be part of the new organization. And lastly, email notification is where you can customize your notification preferences. Great. Thanks, Omar. I noticed the organization name at, at the top is a drop down. What's what's that for? Yes, so this allows you to basically switch between different organizations that you're a part of. Oh, that's handy. And and can you give me an example of when someone might need to use multiple organizations? Yes, so if let's say you're built in different currencies across your cloud providers, then a separate organization will need to be created because the platform only supports one currency per organization. And if anyone's unsure how to manage all of this, is there somewhere that they can refer to for guidance? Yes, of course. So you can simply click on the documentation icon here, and this will take you to our public documentation where you will find information um, on how to utilize the platform. And additionally, if let's say you want to contact our support team, then you can log into your client portal account and click on the icon here and click support to basically raise a support ticket with us. But do recall to please provide us with the organization ID. Thanks, Omar. It's great to know there's an online self-service help resource available. Well, I've really learned a lot and I love how clean and intuitive everything is. I'm really excited for our clients to explore the platform and see just how easy it is to manage and, and optimize their cloud costs. So you can reach out to us to find out more. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content. Thank you.